In the past few years, I read 55 books about social skills. Communication skills, conflict resolution, relationship advice, pretty much anything to become more comfortable and skilled around people. And as many of you really seem to like the insights I shared in the last video of the series, here are five more of my favorite takeaways that I learned after reading all of those books. So the first insight comes from the book Influence by Robert Cialdini and can really help you to become more convincing in a very authentic and relatable way, meaning not as salesy or as fake as I came across in a couple of other books. And there was a study in the late 1970s where people asked if they can skip the line of a printing machine in three different ways. So in the first version they said, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine? Where around 60% of people, I don't know why, <laughs> they must be more kind than me, but they said, sure, you can go ahead without even asking anything back. In the second version, they asked, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine because I'm really in a rush. Around 94% of people said, sure, you can skip the line, which makes a lot of sense to me. However, it gets really interesting in the third variation where people asked, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine because I have to make some copies, which is obvious, right? Why else would you stand here in front of the printing machine? But still, 93% of people said, sure, you can skip the line. Meaning there's just a 1% difference just because you add the word because, meaning you just give a reason. Now you have to be a tiny bit careful because some other studies found out that yeah, if you use a reason that's completely ridiculous, it can even backfire. But just mentioning why you want to do something or why the other person should do something that's very plausible with the word because can help you to be a lot more convincing. Now the second tip is one of the easiest ways to improve your small talk because you probably know those moments when yeah, you don't really find a conversation topic, there's those awkward silences, or the conversation just feels very dull, scripted, yeah, <laughs> just not the most comfortable situation to be in. And there are a lot of different tips and some of them work and some of them don't depending on the person, but I think most of it boils down to one main thing, giving better answers and asking better questions. So for instance, if somebody asks you where are you currently living, which is a pretty average question, you could respond something like, I currently live in Cologne, Germany, which is a pretty basic answer and doesn't really lead to anything. Or you could say something just a bit more interesting, like I'm currently living in Cologne, Germany with my girlfriend, but actually we're planning to move out in December because we were thinking to travel for January, February, and March somewhere in Central America which you see is just a tiny bit longer and it also shouldn't be too long because otherwise you're just talking, but it just gives a lot more potential to lead the conversation in a more interesting way. And for asking questions, it doesn't have to be the most interesting or life-changing questions because the more you try to plan and think about the conversation, the more rigid it gets. But sometimes just asking something that's a bit more interesting, a bit more deep, a bit more, I don't know, different, like, uh, I don't know, what, what did you do? What was the highlight of your last week, right? It's nothing crazy. I, I came up with this on the spot, but it can just lead the conversation just a tiny bit more interesting, especially if you also give a bit more interesting answers afterwards. Now, there's a quote by James Clear mentioning that it's easy to gravitate towards the idea of having lots of friends, but you'll probably benefit more from strengthening your inner circle friendships than from simply gaining more friends. And that's why the final three tips are more related on how to deepen your friendships rather than the first two tips who focused more on more easily getting along with people you don't really know that well. And the third tip relates to how you can give better compliments. Now, you probably never thought about it, but most of the times when somebody gives you a compliment, there is some sort of inner resistance, right? Like you don't know how to answer, sometimes you don't know if it's flattery, is it real? And yeah, it's just, sometimes it can be nice and it's very appreciated, typically when it's very specific um, or yeah, not, not nothing that the grandest thing, like, wow, you're the most caring person I've ever met. Something like this often leads to some resistance, at least within me. But if you still want to give a compliment because, I don't know, you just want to make the other person happy or you want, just want to share it with them, one thing that makes it come across way more meaningful is to give the compliment behind the back. 
And if you think about it, this happens all the time. Maybe your mom told you, oh, aunt, I don't know, Lily said, you are so grown up and you, <laughs> I don't know, you became so much more kind and generous, which probably makes you feel a lot more warm and happy about it than the same aunt telling you this into your face. Or for me, if somebody says, wow, I really liked your video, it was so nice, um, it does make me happy. But if my girlfriend Mavi comes to me and says, yeah, a friend talked about that they really liked the video and it was so meaningful to them and they really enjoyed it and it helped them, it just feels so much nicer because I know, yeah, they just say it because they really feel it, because they mean it, because why else would they share this behind my back to my girlfriend if they don't really mean it, right? And it's true, that's how it typically works. But just instead of talking behind people's back, just sharing more positive things that you like directly to them, but also to the closest people to them in their life. And also, whenever somebody says something nice about a person that's very close to you, you can also do the nice thing and just passing it along. And thus just creating a lot more touch points where people are happy and people feel appreciated. It, <laughs> it does sound a bit, yeah, um, overly emotional, but it's just a very nice thing to share things that you really like about the people you really care about. Now, the fourth tip goes a bit in the opposite direction and can typically be very helpful whenever you're in a conflict or in a very uncomfortable situation. And it comes from a hostage negotiator called Chris Voss. So what they found out is that whenever you see somebody upset or angry or disappointed, that once you mention or label that negative emotion by saying something like, oh, you seem very hurt or it seems like you're very disappointed right now. I say, you seem very angry. Just there's different phrases. Uh, it, it fits better typically in the situation you, you know what to say. That when we label a negative emotion, we diffuse it. There might be a bit more this release of like anger from the other person. If you say, wow, you seem very angry. Say, yes, I am very angry. <laughs> um, we've all been there. But if you do this in slightly different variations and you just acknowledge or mention how the other person feels, it typically calms them down. And on the flip side, if somebody seems very happy or energetic or anything positive, if you label this thing by mentioning it, it increases it. So it's so simple. You just mention, wow, you seem very happy right now, or it seems like you're a bit unsure about this, that those two things can help to calm down the negative and increase the positive. Which brings us to the fifth tip that I realized on the 90th birthday of my grandma. So at the birthday of my grandma, I looked around, there were 45 people, which is a lot of people for a 90 year old person. But one group was family and partners, pretty obvious. Another group was the sauna club that she went or used to go to every single Wednesday and sometimes went on trips. The other group was her volleyball team that she played with for a couple of years. And then on the final table, there were some people that she plays with every Tuesday or so, like some card games. And <laughs> I, at the same, or like while checking for this video, I stumbled upon a quote that one of the best ways to make great friends is to go to recurring events because it just leads to commonalities, to experiences, and just a repeating pattern. And then I really noticed that that's true for my grandma, but also my parents. Most of their friends are either very close to them, like neighbors, old friends, or people they meet in some clubs or some recurring events. And whenever you're in a moment where you feel a bit more lonely, you're a bit more disconnected, it's pretty likely that you have just a bit too few recurring events to actually make those friendships with people that are very similar to you. And if any of the five tips was valuable for you, then you can watch this video next, where I share three extra takeaways after reading all of those books about social skills. And yeah, I'm planning to make this until I read 100 books. So let me know if there's any subtopics or anything you're interested in. And otherwise, thank you for watching.